G'day guys, we're going to be looking at this Carvo Skywalker 10C in today's video. We're going to be doing a key ignition delete and we're also going to be fitting a wireless key fob activated alarm and a mobiliser. Now truth be told, I've already installed the alarm and a mobiliser on this particular scooter. As you can hear there, it's all up and running. But I'm not happy with it for a couple of reasons and we'll get into that right now. So first things first, I don't like the key ignition on this. I thought it was brilliant when we first got the scooter because my Mantis does not have a key ignition. The only thing is now that we've got the wireless key fob, there's no need for the key ignition at all. And it does take up a huge amount of real estate on what are quite small handlebars. Because the Skywalker has foldable handlebars, that actually takes up a lot of room in itself. And when we've got this huge big voltmeter and key ignition on there, it really takes up room that we want for other accessories like mobile phone holders. As it stands, the handlebar grips are already sticking off the edge a little bit on one side, and I don't really like that. When I first installed the immobilizer on this scooter, I actually saw the piggyback for the key ignition and did test unplugging it to see if it would work, and it did. And now I've decided I'm gonna pull it all back apart and I'm going to unplug that ignition so that we can just have the immobilizer. Otherwise, there's just too many steps to turn this scooter on. The other reason I'm going to pull this back apart again is one to make a video for you guys because I could not find one on YouTube on the Skywalker series scooters but also this immobilizer is not as sensitive as the one in my Mantis and the reason for that I believe is that I did not use the double sided tape that came with the immobilizer unit itself when I mounted it inside of the Skywalker. I didn't do it on the Mantis either but the Mantis was a very very tight fit and all you have to do is sneeze next to the Mantis and the alarm goes off. Whereas this one can actually be wheeled away until you actually flick up the side stand. It's not enough to set that alarm system off. So I'm going to double side tape this in. I'm going to show you how I did it because it was a little bit of a tight squeeze to get the immobilizer in here. And we're also going to remove and delete that key ignition as well. Okay, well the first thing that we're going to have to do is fold up the scooter if you haven't already done that. The reason that we need to fold up the scooter is that we need to have this space around the front here clear so that we can get this whole plastic housing off. So in order to get this off, there's just two Phillips screws, one on each side. Unlike the Mantis, we don't need to actually remove the deck or the battery in order to do this installation. We just simply need to remove this plastic housing or fascia here. And these are actually fairly easy to get off and we'll do the one on the other side. Okay, once we've removed both of those screws, we should be able to slide this off. Now, I did have to tap it with a hammer and a screwdriver the first time at the edge here just to get it to come loose. It was quite tight. As you remove this, just be careful because there are cables attached for both the charging point here and the deck lights here. So those cables, you don't want to pull too hard on them. Now I'm just going to move these screws aside here and be a good boy and support this so that it's not being secured by the cables alone. Now, my immobilizer, this is the radio antenna for it here, and the immobilizer is just slipped in there. And you can see how loose the immobilizer unit itself was, and that is probably why, squeeze these LEDs back in, that is probably why it's not very sensitive. Also found that this one was fairly quiet compared to the Mantis, and I think that's also because I had it facing down, so I might change that around this time as well. I suppose I better tell you where I got these immobilizers from. So these actually came from Amped Brothers in Queensland and they are about 80 or 90 dollars each they come with two remotes and they're pretty straightforward i'm sure that you'd be able to get these from other places as well but queensland um, versus china in these times the delivery was a lot sooner and i really wanted to be able to leave these things at the shops uh, without having to worry about them getting stolen or damaged okay so here's the double-sided tape that comes with it so i'm assuming we can just stick that onto the non-speaker side onto the back and then we can stick that into the scooter but before i do that i'm going to show you uh, how to fit it up so that i've got a little bit of slack in these cables 
Okay, so you can see that I decided to put the unit itself down this side of the scooter and it does fit in there nice and easily. Now the reason that I decided to put it in on this side is that there is a lot less cabling going down this side. You can see that there is the battery through there and then in the front is the speed controller and around this side you can see that it gets very very busy inside of that channel and that's why I decided that I would actually put it in this side. The only thing with that is that you need to run the cable that taps into the controller cable across the front of the scooter right underneath there and squeeze it out through this hole with all of this other cabling on the other side. Now in order to do that it was quite tricky there's not a lot of room in there. To get in there I found it easiest to get right underneath here and you can see that there are two screws. Now don't worry there's no nuts or anything on top of them you can safely undo those screws and that will make that speed controller come loose and it actually slides out the front of the scooter quite easily on one side and gives you enough room to run your cable. So what I did was I poked the cable out this side here and then I slid it over the top and then poked it through there. Quick tip on that one, disconnect the cable. Where is it? Let me just turn the scooter around. Okay, so now we've turned this around, we can get in here a little bit easier. See, it is very, very busy in here. So what we're gonna do is pull all of these connectors out. Try and get a bit of slack in here so we can see what's going on. Now, the other thing that I did accidentally when I pulled all of this out originally was separated a couple of these plugs and then actually stopped the horn and the lights from working. So just be careful that if you have everything all plugged in before you put it back in again. Now, these are the three wires coming from the immobilizer and you can see it has its little set of connectors there that tap into the original connectors. And you can see up here we have another set of connectors and that is for the key ignition. So this cable here heads up to the key ignition and that is split between this one here and this one here. So we are going to disconnect those and that will eliminate our key ignition from working. So let's go ahead and do that. Actually, one other thing quickly. So what I did was, I've tucked it back in now so it's hard to see, but as we come across here, see this little connector here? That goes from your immobilizer to those little connectors that are designed to connect it to the controller on the handlebars. So in order to make things easier when we're running the cable, I actually disconnected that, fed it through, reconnected it out here and then pushed it back in there. So anyway, let's go ahead and disconnect this key ignition. And now I'm just going to connect the immobilizer directly in there. And that there we can actually remove, which will give us a bit more space. In theory, that'll work. Let's see how it goes. That is much louder now that it's outside of it. Let's just see if it powers up. Okay, so in order for the immobilizer to be disarmed, you have to disarm the alarm, but you also have to double tap this power button to release the immobilizer. Okay, now theoretically, this should be able to be powered on. And there we go, that all seems to be good. So if I now immobilize this, or will turn the alarm on, it should cut the power to the controller. And that looks to be a complete success. We'll just disarm it so that we don't end up setting it off once again. But, oh, and I'll do the immobilizer as well. There we go. Alrighty, the next thing we need to do is remove that off the handlebars. But before we do that, we're going to put the immobilizer back in. We'll swing this back around the other way once we've tidied all of this stuff up. We'll stick the double-sided tape on the immobilizer itself, and then we'll put the cover back on and head up to the handlebars. You just want to be really careful when you're tucking all this in. Like I said, you don't want to 
damage anything or disconnect anything. It's a good idea to make sure everything's working once you put it back on before you go for a ride because you certainly wouldn't want to have things failing while you're moving down the road at 45 k's an hour. Okay, we've got a double-sided tape. I'm just going to peel this off. Easier if you've got fingernails. Just to get to the back side of the immobilizer. Another bit of cover off. Okay, now let's see. I think if we have the speaker facing upwards, it will be more effective. Just place it in there and put a bit of pressure on it, and I think that's going to make a big difference. We just need to tuck this antenna wire in. Sorry about the angle, you know, you can't see in there very well, but it's pretty straightforward. And then what we need to do is try and get all of these wires tucked back in here without pinching anything or damaging anything. There's no process to this, it's just a little bit painful. Especially on this side here, but you want to try and tuck as much of this down in this channel here as you can to try and get it out of your way. And of course it depends on how your cables kind of lay as to how hard it is. Once we get those kind of about where we need them, we can start trying to slide this back over the channel. I find that this one here can be a little bit of a challenge to get back into place. Sometimes it's easier if you get someone to help you hold it. But, I'm a bit of a no-mate at the moment. I've got no friends here to help me, so I'm just going to have to try and get it in there myself. Sorry about the rattling from my tools on my workbench. Okay. Probably wouldn't hurt to put a bit of Loctite on these, but there wasn't any Loctite on them to start with, so I haven't done it myself. And if these screws did come loose, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Okay, so what we want to do now is make sure that everything is working. And I should be able to test all of this with it folded up here. The first things first, make sure it arms and disarms. Okay, so the immobilizer, the alarm, everything's all working. Now we'll power it on. Okay, and you can't see that, but it has powered on and we will just test the motor. Motor is working. And we need to check the lights because this is what happened last time. The horn and the lights. Neither of them were working last time. Okay, we have our light on here. And there's our tail light at the back here. Tail light and brake lights are all working. So we can just turn that off now, like that. Okay, so we're all good to go. Now, if we just turn this immobilizer off, we can see that we have our key ignition down here and it has a built-in oh, voltmeter. <laughs> of course, I've unplugged that, so of course it's not working. So let's just get rid of this key now, we don't need it, that's just a pain in the ass. So, now this voltmeter, you can see that it takes up a huge amount of real estate all the way around here, especially over this side here. It goes right down underneath. And I have, I actually had to move this brake lever up a bit just to make it fit with the phone holder in here. It was all very tight. But you can also see that the handle grip's not all the way on. Now it was actually like that when I got it. And that's because the handlebars fold up with these spring-loaded systems here. And that takes up a whole heap of real estate just in itself. So it's gonna be good to get rid of this and have a bit more room around here because this one here doesn't go all the way in and we've got this flappy bit of handle grip here. So let's get to taking this off. Now some of you might be saying, well, hang on, that voltmeter is really cool. You should be keeping that. That's, uh, that's a really handy thing. But two things, one with the angle that I've had to put it on, 
you can't see it in the sunlight anyway. It's a red LED display and it's just hopeless. Secondly, you actually have a voltmeter built into your computer anyway, so you don't need the one over there. Although it's kind of a nice to have, it's taking up a lot of room and the key ignition is just a pain now. So that's why I'm getting rid of it. Now, unfortunately, even if I use this five millimeter Allen key socket here to loosen off this whole assembly, it looks like I'm going to have to remove my phone holder, my light switch, my brake lever, and my handle grip just to be able to get this off. So I guess we just got to do it. If I can get it back on again. Use soapy water, I think that's the trick. That's tight, that is off, in three different sizes. It's a matter of just cutting the cable ties here. Now, interestingly enough, I pulled the brake light cable apart. Put that back on. Actually, we might leave that off until we get this. Until we get the brake lever back on. But everything here has nice connectors on it. Except for, of course, the one we're working on, and I can't see any connectors at all. So, I think we are just going to cut this one and stick it back in. Make sure it's the right one. Okay. We'll re-cable tie that all together once we get it back on. But we can put this on here. Actually, phone holder first. Heaps of room there now. All right, we can start doing things back up. Make sure that we can clear the handlebar release. And that's working well. Make sure that we've got enough room for the handle grip to go all the way on this time, so that can go right up there. And that should give us, there we go, a nice fit. Let's put this on now so that we can Make sure that we've got enough room there. Woo! Should we put that soapy water on? Alright. And we can put that down there where it's supposed to be. Plug that brake connector back in before we forget, because that activates your brake light, but more importantly, it activates your regenerative braking. Okay, brake light is working. Now I've just got one more to go. Let's tighten up this little bad boy. Lights are working, horn's working, beautiful. Okay, and here we are. 
Very nice. Much more room, much cleaner. Handle grip on nice and tight. Easy access to this to fold the handlebars and it doesn't jam up. So very, very happy. Everything looks to be working absolutely perfect. I'm gonna just do one last test of the alarm and there we go. Excellent. Alrighty, well hopefully this helps you if you've got a Skywalker by Carbo and you want to put an immobilizer on it or if you're just looking for a little bit of extra handlebar real estate like we were here. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you've got any comments about what I've done today, please feel free to put them down on the comments below. I will be doing a review on the Skywalker and a comparison between the Skywalker and the Mantis Duo because we do have one of each at a later time. So keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching.